So with the release of Komi, she came out with two weapons, that being the Hagasa and Amanada. So for today, I'll be reviewing the Hagasa, and next time on the next video, we'll see the Amanada. So first, I'll cover how the weapon works, the builds I made for it, and then we'll go test it in Still Path outside of the Simulacrum, because these are obviously just to test the weapon, and then we go to Still Path to test it, how it functions in an actual mission. So let's see how the weapon functions normally. So the Hagasa is Komi's signature gun umbrella. To me, when I hear the word gun umbrella, the thing that comes to my mind is actually Hyperion from the Borderlands series. If you think of Borderlands 3, it always had a shield pop up. That's what the Higasa does when you scope down. When you scope down, you will get a shield that will take in bullets and charge your alternate fire. The alternate fire for the Higasa is a powerful blast laser that will also apply a status effect. If you use the Higasa Augment, which is a uh, Higasa Serration mod, it can be applied on top of Galvanized Chamber, so it's quite nice to mix it. So what are the stats like? When it comes to the Higasa, it is pretty low damage. Mine has a total of 33, but without Rifle Lamp, it would be at a total of 22. It has has a 24% crit chance, 18% status, so it has lower than average status, but pretty normal crit chance with its crit multiplier being at a two, not exactly the highest. It's a five uh, round burst. It's not the worst, but sadly, when you decrease the fire rate, it does feel a little sluggish. Uh, the charge time is not bad for the alternate fire. It is a primarily puncture weapon, so it's quite good at dealing with armor. The Hagasa Serration mod, the alternate fire will apply a random status effect, and it also gives you a plus 450% damage. So to me, this mod is almost a essential requirement on the weapon because it just helps it that much more. As you see, it bumps it up all to a flat 90, flat 60, and 150 in total. So we'll cover the builds I have made for it, test in the simulacrum, and then we'll go test in the Path mission. So we have three builds. We have a viral build, an armored build, and a corpus build. Each one of these has a lot of similar mods, so I'll only cover the ones that change. With the viral one, we use Prime Cryo Rounds, Malignant Force, so we get viral. We have 100 munitions to deal with the whole addition of applying uh, Slash, Agasa Serration. It applies additively to the weapon, but it's very useful for the alternate fire. Vital Sense for the crit, Galvanized Aptitude, and Galvanized Chamber with Critical Delay. Uh, uh, only difference on the armored one is we are using corrosive and cold with primary frostbite. Basically, every mod is the same. And with the corpus one, only difference is we're now using magnetic and toxin with primary deadhead because it's quite easy to hit headshots on the corpus. So I'll show off the builds, test them, and then go test them in Steel Path. So I don't want to take up too much of your time because I bet y'all are enjoying the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this and do appreciate my content, make sure you guys hit the like button, do subscribe, and turn on that bell for post notifications so always get notified whenever I post another video. I do enjoy making these. It's quite fun to make them. I hope you guys enjoy the content and I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of the video. So the very first one I'll be covering is the viral build. And with the reason I'm using Komi is because her passive applies additional effects to your weapon. So we might as well take full advantage of it because without my pet, Galvanized Aptitude really isn't getting any benefit on the weapon. So it's not showing its full potential, but the weapon by itself, as you can see, since it doesn't have any innate punch through, it has to be individual targets you aim for, and it applies a good amount of slash, and it doesn't hit that bad for not getting any bonuses for having like no additional status effects on enemies. It does quite good on killing the small enemies, and now once we have our charge, we use the alternate fire. And as you see, it applies one of like four random status effects to an enemy that we all hit, and it kills some of them or misses if you don't know how to aim like I do. So we see how this one works. Let's go show off the other ones now. All right, next up is the Corrosive Cold build. So we have the Grenier. So with the way Primary Frostbite works, since it gives more mold shot and crit damage, it does help quite a lot when dealing with a lot of these enemies. And as you see, it does hit quite hard, especially on the small ones. And if we go for the bigger ones, so stop aiming at him. Doesn't take that long to kill him, especially since we are getting slash procs. But what about the whole laser? Well, does quite well since it also benefits from using primary frostbite and it, it hits quite hard and does a lot of good damage so let's show off the corpus build and then i will pick one of the random builds to take into a steel path mission next we have the toxin and uh, magnetic build so i'm gonna first show off the laser as see does quite a lot of damage and the weapon functions well quite nicely i like magnetic now because it does spread to other enemies nearby so i really like it on a lot of my weapons Toxin's good because these guys don't have any armor you got to really shred through it's just straight up health and once again, we got another laser. I just saw that. Ooh, that hits very, very hard. So I'm going to go pick a random build and I'll see you on the bath because now you can see it whenever Galvanized Aptu gets to take advantage of having additional status effects be applied to other enemies. All right, and here we are in a steel path mission. And as you see, now that enemies actually have other statuses being applied to them, uh, let's just say it does make the weapon a little bit nicer to have galvanized aptitude on since now we're able to just well take advantage of the whole enemies have more statuses and that thing does more damage to enemies with more statuses outside of the ones we just apply with our weapon. First I thought I brought the corpus build but I see it actually does quite well despite not having uh, a lot of sacks and I'm trying to get one of my uh, I'm going to quickly try to get one of my things done so as you see the weapon doesn't do bad it does kind of struggle since I am trying to complete a decree like an idiot laser 
as you see, whoo, does a lot of damage. I really do like seeing that. There we go. Now I can stop being in the air like a fool. Let me suspend everybody. There we go. Now we can see really how it does. Sadly, with no punch through, it does struggle a bit, but that's the point of the laser, since it does feel really fast thanks to the shield. Because as enemies shoot the shield, it will um, increase our umbrellas, umbrella, the charge on our um, alt fire. So as you see, does quite well, keeping me alive, especially because uh, it's blocking the damage I should be taking. And pop. it does spread uh, the statuses you do apply if you hit them in multiple lines. But these are once again, the basic enemies. Ooh, stop shooting me. The basic enemies from this mission. So I will be back with y'all when a, oh God, that lagged my game. I'll be back with y'all when a Acolyte spawns. Ooh, here we go. Nice. That was cool. All right. I'll see y'all when an Acolyte spawns. All right. And the Acolyte has finally decided to show their face. Hey, one that doesn't reset their own statuses. So I should be able to take advantage of being, uh, for being, for having Galvanized Aptitude on my builds. So how much damage does this do? Surprisingly, not that bad for, uh, I thought it would do less, but sadly, uh, it seems like the dog does not wish to apply any status effects. So I'll have to do it myself. So. How does it work now? Oh, there we go. There's the damage. That's the biggest issue with weapons that have Galvanized Aptitude, in my opinion, is you kind of rely on it to do damage. But overall, it's not the worst. Oh, that went through the wall, through the wall, through the floor. So I see it doesn't do that bad. Kill the Acolyte quite quickly. So I'll head back to the Orbiter and give you all my final thoughts on how this weapon uh, works, because it is an early game weapon. So most early game players will be acquiring this. What are my thoughts on the Hagasa? The Hagasa is not a bad weapon for it being a starter weapon for most people, as it does not have a mastery rank requirement. Same thing with Komi and the Amanada. They are all able to be acquired really early on in the game. Sadly, one of the biggest issues I do have with it is the fact that their Hagasa serration and Amanada's uh, pressure uh, cannot be acquired until Steel Path has been unlocked. So it makes getting them a little annoying to get for other people outside of just straight up purchasing it. But overall, the weapon's not bad. It's not my cup of tea. I prefer other weapons. Like if I'm going to use a primary weapon, I'd probably still use uh, my Sybaris Prime, my Burst On if I wanted to, Strun, etc. Stuff like that. But people do enjoy burst weapons like this, and I think other people would enjoy it too. And again, these builds are not the best build ever. You could use uh, Bane mods to help you do more damage, change out all the mods, max them out if you want. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Uh, I hope this vi video was informative on how the weapon functions and a rough idea of how you can build it. And I'll see y'all in the next one. The next one's going to be Amanada. See you next week.